Hello everybody, it's Nick here from thegameraccess.com to speak on Sony's acquisition of Gaikai nourishing the PlayStation Vita and enriching the PlayStation experience. So a lot of people are kind of looking at this in a basic manner, like, okay, cool, we're going to have cloud gaming where we'll go on our PlayStation 3 and we'll be able to stream, let's say, PC games, which is going to be huge because games that are only available on the PC will now be available via Gaikai on the PlayStation devices. But look outside of the box, folks. It is browser-based. Think about that for a second. What does the PlayStation Vita have? A browser. So do not be surprised if on PlayStation Vita you're able to experience, of course, PlayStation 1 games that's coming in an upcoming firmware update, so you don't need to worry about that. But PlayStation 2, yes. PlayStation 3 games, PC games, all of these on your PlayStation Vita. PlayStation 3s that don't have backwards compatibility. That would then be possible because they can put the PS2 games on these servers. The PlayStation 3, once again, can stream it. Once this acquisition, it's, it's already final, but once it's put into full effect, don't be surprised to see a Gaikai app appear on your PlayStation 3. It's going to open up so many opportunities because the PlayStation 3 will now be able to play PC games that were once only available on Windows platforms. PlayStation 3, you'll have backwards compatibility even with the newer models. PlayStation Vita, you'll be able to play all these games as well. And then Sony, of course, they make televisions, so don't be surprised if they start integrating Gaikai into their televisions. We already see Samsung doing it because Gaikai made an agreement with Samsung before Sony bought them. So they have to stick to that. But don't be surprised if with Sony's new televisions, Gaikai is built into it where you buy a television. Guess what? You're playing these high quality games on your television. Now, yes, it probably will take at least a year to get Gaikai to where it needs to be because it, it was available. It still is available. Go to Gaikai.com. You can play demos of all these games. And it works all right, but there's still a lag. The, the visual quality is not where it needs to be, but it's working pretty solid. Now you have Sony, who has a lot more money than Gaikai had. Obviously, they bought them out for $380 million. They have the money to fund into enhancing this service. And Sony's not having to start from scratch. They've got the infrastructure. They've got the technology. And they've got the brains at Gaikai working for them. So this is going to be huge. This has the chance to bring the Vita back to life. Because the Vita, it's doing all right. But sales are, yeah, we'll not get into sales. It's not good. But if they are able to get Gaikai fully integrated with the PlayStation Vita. And you're able to play your PlayStation 3 games play your PlayStation 2 games on your Vita, and they market that correctly, expect Vitas to fly off the shelves. You can call me on that. Trust me, it will be huge. Sony's just got to execute it correctly. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I think this has, is a huge opportunity. I think this is a huge opportunity for Sony. I think it's a great move. Yes, they could have bought OnLive. I'm sure OnLive, I mean, don't be surprised if Microsoft buys OnLive next. You never know. But I think this is a great move for Sony. We'll see where it goes, and hopefully within a year we see it being fully integrated into PlayStation's devices, into Sony's products. It'll be something to look forward to. But let me know what you guys see in the comment section. If you want to email me, you can email me at admin@thegameraccess.com. Follow me on Twitter, at Nick McCandless, and be sure to keep checking back at thegameraccess.com. Thank you guys for watching. Please be active in the comment section. I'm out.